What's up everybody? Welcome to Gray Rabbit Finance. I'm your host Tyler and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to use multi time frame analysis to enter trades with the Ichimoku system. I will also be teaching you how I use the Bollinger Bands and Stochastic to help me enter trades on the lower time frames. Let's hop in. Okay guys, so the first thing we have to do before entering a trade is that we need to identify if the market is trending or not. And so I like to make sure that the chart is either trending on the daily chart or the four hour chart uh, before I look to the lower time frames to begin looking for an entry on my trade. And so now you can see here, this is the US dollar Japanese yen, and this is on the daily chart. And you can see that the uh, on this orange line, vertical line here is where we have a candle closing above the resistance here. And now we're starting to get the indication that this is the beginning of a new trend. And so we have um, the Tenken Sen, which is the blue line. We have the Kijin Sen, which is the green line. And we have Senko Span A and B all pointing in the up direction. And we have the Chico Span now above the candles. So this. Um, could very well be the beginning of a new trend. So let's move down to the four hour time frame and let's take a look and see if it's trending there. Okay guys, now we're on the four hour time frame chart and uh, you can see that the Ichimoku system is also trending on this time frame. So we have the same conditions, um, the Tenken Sen, the Kijin Sen, Senko Span A and B, and the Chico Span are all pointing up. So we know that uh, this chart is now trending on the daily and also the four hour chart. So now it's time to go down to an even lower time frame. So I'd like to move to the one hour chart next. Okay guys, now on the one hour chart, um, we're starting to see a Kumo sloping in the bullish direction, um, but we have the Tenken Sen and the Kijin Sen are flat now, right? So we're gonna need to wait to enter the market until we get a close above this uh, resistance line. And that's where we're gonna, once we close above here is where we're gonna look for an entry on the lower time frames. And I typically like to enter the market on the 15 minute or five minute charts. Um, and like mentioned previous, previously before, um, I do not recommend using the Ichimoku system on any chart um, lower than the 30 minute chart, um, as it's just, it doesn't really work properly from my experience. Okay guys, now we're going to play some of the price action on the bar replay to see if the candle closes above this uh, resistance. Okay. So we have a close above the resistance. And now you can see all the conditions are met on the one hour chart. Um, and so we have all five lines pointing up. So now it's time to take a look at the lower time frames. And we're going to start by going down to the 30 minute chart. And then if we find the proper conditions on the 30 minute, we're going to take the entry on the 15 or a five minute chart. Okay, we're here on the 30 minute chart. And now I'm seeing that all the conditions are met and the market is trending up on this chart as well. And now we have to remember Gochi Hasada, the inventor of the Ichimoku said, know thy presence of the market. And so this is the first part that we need to figure out, right? And so now we know that the presence of the market on the higher time frames, the middle uh, time frames, and the lower time frames are all trending now. And now we must uh, finally tune our entry placement, right? And how do we do that? We're gonna enter on the 15 or five minute chart, uh, depending on the conditions uh, from the indicators that we use. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that now. Okay guys, now we're on the 15 minute chart. And now we can remember also that Gochi Hosada said, simplicity is the truth. And so I like to keep it simple on these lower time frame charts. Now the first thing I'm gonna be looking at is the price action, right? And so if you look at the price action, you can see that the price is moving in a bullish direction. We got higher highs and we have uh, higher lows here, right? So you can see this sloping up like that. You can see that we broke the resistance line here and you can see that we got another end wave, a bullish end wave above that. So if I look at the overall price action right now, it's also trending in the bullish direction. And so that brings me to my next indicator. We're gonna look at the Bollinger Bands. And now just for a little bit of background information, 
Um, these Ballinger bands were developed by John Ballinger in the 80s. And this is a technical analysis tool to generate uh, oversold or overbought signals. Um, and it's composed of typically of three lines. And so the middle line is the orange line, and that's a, uh, that's a 20 period um, simple moving average. And then it's deviated. And so you can see that I have two Bollinger bands. And so if you go on trading view, um, you can set this up yourself. But this is just a Bollinger band with 20 uh, simple moving average, and it has a deviation of one, right? So I use that, and I also use a Bollinger band with 20 simple moving average and a deviation of two. And so um, basically what that means is in the, the deviation, this is deviation one over here. And so the price is expected to be within these bands 68.3% of the time. And now if I turn on deviation two, the price is expected to be within the bands 95.5% of the time. And so basically, you know, what that tells you is that, uh, you know, this is sort of the defined range of the price action. And you can see, so to get into the nuance of this, um, we talked about this in the last video, but I kind of like to think about a Bollinger Band as like a, a pipe, right? And so right here, we have a lot of pressure building in the pipe and the pressure is squeezing, the bands are squeezing in tight and it's creating a lot of pressure, right? And once that pressure is released, it goes out like this. And you see that you'll get an expansion on these bands, right? And so that's what we're starting to see here. So this is the first signal that I like to look at. Here's the Bollinger Band squeeze, and now we're having the expansion, right? So we have that as an indicator. And now uh, we're gonna look at the next indicator that I like to use. And this is uh, stochastic. And basically what the stochastic is, is you know pretty much the same thing. Um, it was developed by Tushar um, S. Shand and Stanley Kroll. And they uh, developed this in their book back in 1994. Um, so this is a pretty popular indicator. Um, but it's just, you know, basically just to show you when it's overbought and oversold. Um, but I like to make sure that you know, to get an edge on the market and to be time efficient, you know, we need to make sure that we have the trends on all the time frames. So the four hour time frame, the daily time frame is trending up. Check. The one hour and 30 minute time frame is trending up. Check. Now we can feel comfortable entering into a time efficient trade um, because, you know, Gochi Hosada also said timing is everything in the market. And so we don't want our trades to be, you know, we want them to be time efficient. We want them to move in our direction as fast and as soon as possible so we can um, set the break even and we can play with the house's money. Right. And so how do we how do we get a good entry? Well, we need an edge. Right. And so this is how we get an edge. Um, we look at the price action. We make sure that, you know, this is key too. the candle needs to close above the resistance level. It needs to close. You'll get a lot of candles that go up, look like they're about to close. And if you jump in early, that's gonna be a false breakout, right? So we need to make sure that it actually closes. Price, wait for the candle to close. And I like to wait for another end wave too, just to be extra safe, right? And so now we see the price action. We see that the Bollinger Bands have squeezed here in this position and that they're expanding up and we have bullish end waves moving up above the resistance line. And now we have a gold cross on the stochastic. And so if I see all of these conditions met, I'm ready to take an entry on my trade. And so this is, this is what we're going to do. We're going to enter the trade now. Okay, guys. So now that all the conditions have been met, we're going to enter a trade here at the green line, risking 2% of our total portfolio uh 35 pips to the red line here which is our stop loss and so let's see how this position plays out okay i'm gonna hide the stochastic we don't really need that in okay guys this is what i'd like to see so i'm gonna pause real quick 
Um, you can see our position started here and we have another end wave with a candle close above here, right? And so typically what I like to do is, you know, this is about 35 pips of stop loss and this is about 30 pips of uh, profit. I like to, to move my stop loss up. So I'm gonna set it now at, at about 1%. So now we're only risking 1%. And let's see how the price action continues. Okay, so now you can see that we've had at least uh, 35 pips, which was what our original stop loss was. So I'm gonna set the stop loss to break even. And let's, uh, let's let the trade continue. So now we're sitting at break even, so we're not going to lose any money on this trade at all. Okay. Now let's take a look at the 30 minute chart. Let's put the itching puppy back on. Okay, guys. So this is something that we need to keep in mind here. Um, the 30 minute chart is flat, but we're using, we're going to use the higher time frames too. So now we see that the one hour is also flat. And like before we mentioned that this acts like a magnet, right? So if the Kijin Sen is flat here on the one hour, there's a good chance that price can reverse back down to this level and, and that could stop us out, right? And now you can see also too, our position here on the four hour chart. Now, the four hour chart is still pointed up on the Kijin Sen, but the Tenkin Sen is starting to uh, flatten also. So we need to be careful um, not to get stopped out, right? So let's get some more price action. Now you can see the Bollinger Bands are squeezing. Oh, hold on, let me turn off the uh, Ichimoku. So this is a Bollinger Band squeeze, right? So the pressure's building and it's either gonna expand up or it's gonna expand down, right? And okay, here we go. It looks like we're expanding up, right? So now prices close above this range. Now I'm gonna move my stop loss up to here, right? just below this. So I'm gonna do that because I wanna capture some profits. And by moving our stop loss up, uh, we're eliminating the chance for greed. So, you know, when the market reverses and comes back down, uh, it's gonna sell our position and we're, it's gonna eliminate um, any sort of greed, uh, the emotion of greed from our trading process. So let's keep playing the price action. Okay, it looks like we're still trending up. Now, you can see too, you know, why why do we have two Bollinger Bands, right? Well, I like to have two Bollinger Bands because I like to, you know, this just gives you an extra visual cue here. When you have the, uh, this is called uh, band walking. And when the price is walking on these outer deviations here, um, that's a good indicator that this is a very bullish market. So this is something to keep an eye on. And this is also a good indicator uh, just visually. Okay, let's go up to the higher time frames and just see how the Ichimoku is looking. Okay, guys, so this is looking good still. Um, now let's. So we got this pointing up, right? Let's see on the one hour. Okay, so on the one hour we have the Kijinsen flat, and we also have the Tenkinsen flat. So this there's a possibility that price could be reversing, and I'm just gonna throw in a, a Fibonacci extension just to measure this wave. So I'd like to start here, click at the top of this candle and the bottom here, right? And so on the one hour, if you measure this wave, um, you know, a possible target for this could be up here. Cause this is a, hold on, let me put that there. That's, this could be a possible target. Let's put this like that. 
this could be a possible target for us um, because the 1.272 is uh, typically a target for institutional traders. So I like to use that um, as my target as well. And let's take a look at the four hour chart. So, okay, this is beautiful. Look, the four hour chart is still um, pointing up, right? So, you know, before we, we, we took the higher time frame, so we take a four hour or the daily, right? And then we take the one hour and the 30 minute. And so if the four hour chart is still pointing up, I'm gonna be holding my position. But if we start to see the Kijinsen flat or the Tenkinsen flat on the four hour chart, we need to start thinking about capturing profits because there could be a reversal in the market. So let's let's get back down to the lower time frame and let's continue watching our price action. Okay, looks like we're getting another squeeze and expansion. We have some BAM walking going on. Okay, we're getting close to that level now. Looks like it's getting resisted at the 1.272 Fibonacci level. Now let's take a look at the four hour chart and see if it's flattened out yet. Okay, it hasn't flattened yet, but these lines are starting to turn over a bit. Um, let's look at the one hour chart. One hour chart is still bullish. So we need to get another close above this resistance level here. So let's keep watching the price action. Okay, we're starting to range here at this level. Let's see if we can get another leg up here. Okay. Okay, guys, great. Now price has broken above this resistance level. And now I'm gonna move, I'm gonna go ahead and move um, our stop loss up to here, just below this level, because we have a nice, uh, you know, you can see this flat part here. This is a nice little range, and we've just broken out of that. So I'm gonna move our our stop loss up there to capture some more profits and so far let's see how many pips we have okay we have about a hundred and ten pips which is which is great um, that's over a three to one risk to reward ratio and typically I like to have at least three to one risk to reward so this is a this is a absolutely fantastic trade in my book um, so let's keep watching it Okay, we have a retest of this level here. Okay, now guys, look. Just in terms of price action, you know, we had a breakout of this re resistance level and we have a retest. Now the retest bounced back off, but we, have, we haven't broken back above this level here. So this, I'm starting to see the price round, round out and it looks like it's gonna head in the other direction. So let's take a look at the higher time frames. And let's see what's going on here. Okay, so we see that here Sanko Span B is flat, but this is still overall very bullish. Chico Span above the candles. The Tenken Sen is pointing up. The Kijin Sen is pointing up, but looks like it might flatten out soon. And Senko Span A is pointing up. So this is still bullish on the four hour chart. But one thing to note too guys that you know the farther price gets away from these lines like you can see here the trends start with the Tenkan Sen and the Kijin Sen very like tight and close to each other but as the price extends up further uh, you start to create some sort of gap and some space between the two lines and so this is going to um, 
kind of show you also where the trend could start to get exhausted and pull back to these average lines. So let's let's take a look at the one hour. Okay, so yeah, so on the one hour we have Sanko span A and B flat. We had the Kijunsen flat, and we have the Tenkinsen acting as a support, but looks like price could possibly close below the Tenkinsen. So if we see that, that could be a sign of reversal. So let's go back to the 15 minute. Here we are, and let's get the price action playing again. Okay guys, now we're ranging at this level. Ranging, ranging. Are you gonna get a close above here? Okay, looks like we close above there. So now I'm going to move the stop loss up to this. Oh, sorry guys, wrong line. I'm gonna move our stop loss up to the bottom of this range now. And so you see, that's how we continue to capture profit um, as the trade moves in our direction. And if there is a sharp reversal, we'll have nothing to worry about. Um, our positions will sell themselves and we'll take a bunch of profit. So that's that's how I like to do it. Um, and you know, it's gonna eliminate any feelings of greed because I'm, I'm already capturing all these profits. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, it's band walking. see if let's see in the tire higher time frames uh, look we have a lower high right here so let's go take a look at our time frames. okay well this is looking great still um, four hour chart as you can see uh, here, let me just hide some stuff so everything's pointing up so this is a very solid trending market let's go back to the one hour Okay guys, on the one hour chart, the Kijun Sen is flat, but it looks like we had some support here from the Tenkan Sen. So now we just need to close above this level to continue this trend going up. So let's get back to the 15 minute. And let's continue to watch the price action. Now, another thing too to think of guys is when I'm trading, oh, hold on, let's pause. So right there, oh, looks like we almost hit our stop loss, but we, luckily the stop loss was protected, but um, you know, this is a gigantic candle. So I'm gonna go back to the higher time frames and see how they look, but this could be our signal that we need to think about exiting the market soon. Okay, yeah, so as you can see here on the four hour chart, we have the Kijuns in this flat. So now is the time to start thinking about capturing these profits. And so, as you guys know, we entered the trade here and we rode the trade all the way up to this level here. Um, so let's, let's go take a look at the 15 minute and see if our stop loss gets hit. But what I was mentioning before is that, you know, I'm using the bar replay right now in TradingView. But uh, typically, if you're using TradingView, you know, if you're not using the bar replay, uh, you can do a split screen. So what I will do is I'll have the higher time frames on one part of my screen, and then I'll have the lower time frames on the other, and that helps, so you don't have to keep switching back and forth. All right, let's play these bars. Let's see what happens. Okay, there we go. So uh, we exited the trade here and let's see, we captured about 133 pips of profit. So that's, you know, 
that's a pretty solid trade. Uh, at, we risk 35 pips. So that's, you know, over four to one uh, risk to reward uh, ratio. Um, so yeah, so, you know, basically what I wanted you guys to see is just kind of, uh, you know, a simple strategy to use multi time frame analysis to understand the presence of the market to know, okay, Ichimoku is trending up on the daily and four hour. Okay, it's trending up on the one hour now. It's trending up on the 30 minute. And we waited for the candle to close, which, you know, it had the candle has to close. That's the most important part. And now we feel comfortable to look at the lower time frames in order to enter the market. And how did we do that? We looked on the 15 minute chart and we found a Bollinger Band squeeze uh, we found some band walking, we looked at the price action, and we saw a gold cross on the stochastic. And so if we have price action, Bollinger Band squeeze, and we have the stochastic gold cross, those are, th I like to take three signals um, in order to get an edge on the market. And that's when I know, okay, green light, all systems go, it's time to enter the market. And typically, you know, I like to shoot for three to one risk to reward ratio. Um, so I would recommend, you know, going for three to one. And if you can get more, that's great, but definitely shoot for three to one. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how we do it. That's how we take time efficient trades. Um, you know, usually a good trade works from the very beginning. Um, if price starts to reverse, or starts ranging at the beginning, then I I look to exit my position um, sooner rather than later because you know the key to trading is to get to get your stop loss to break even as soon as you can. Uh, so you're playing with the house's money and to take as small of losses as possible. And over time, um, you guys will understand this uh, as you start to see more price action. You start to practice. Um, you will start to intuitively understand these things. Um, but yeah, you know, for today's uh, lesson, just was, you know, a, a simple trade uh, with multi time frame analysis and just showing you guys how I like to enter uh, on the lower time frames. So, yeah, I hope uh, you found this content useful. Um, if you did, please feel free to like and subscribe and uh, let me know what indicators you guys like to use on the lower time frames. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, I'm using Bollinger Band and Stochastic, but maybe you have some other ones that you like to use. So let me know in the comments below. And until next time, guys, peace.